Welcome, everybody, and it's an honor for me to be able to introduce Tom. I've known Tom for uh, over 25 years when uh, I started participating in some of the work that he was doing, and he is a clinical psychologist, um, transpersonal psychologist, really, and he worked at the Center for Attitudinal Healing uh, for over 30 years, where uh, he was working with terminally ill children, which is quite quite a, a medicine work in itself. He has uh, started at Wakan, which is a nonprofit, which is uh, has a focus of restoring the sacred in everyday life. And uh, he apprenticed with the Huicho tribe in north central Mexico, uh, where they did the ritual use of peyote medicine for healing and initiation. And that was an ordeal, and he's going to tell you about that uh, over a dozen years, I believe, right? Um, Fruitful Aging is one of the books that's available up there. Shamanic Wisdom of the Weecho is also another book that's available. And I've read the book when it was in its uh, prior form. It was called The Flowers of Wiracuta, which is uh, kind of like his personal phenomenological account of what it was like to go through this apprenticeship. And it was a beautiful book because it was a very honest and also a reflective book. So it's a good read, and uh, I'm glad to see that it's still cooking. The subtopic got me uh, that I really liked, medicine teachings for modern times. And that's, I guess, always the question that we bring up at the Erie meetings, how can we apply these things in contemporary culture with all the challenges that we have? So he uh, he's a, an expert at creating a situation and that's how I really feel about the work that I've seen him do. And um, the situation is, um, offers people a chance to expand into another space. So it creates a situation for expansion outside of the spectacle that we're in and allows us to then kind of experience the spectacular. So it's a real interesting work and, and I'm very happy that he came. And uh, it's a great group. So Tom, welcome. push that button. So is this working now? You can hear me? Yeah. All right. I'm going to sing a song. You might want me to turn it off after you hear the song, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. Because uh, it's a song I wrote uh, a number of years ago, and it's called Thank You Plant People. So it's kind of uh, a way of saying thank you to the spirits of the plant people, the, the, uh, all the plant people but especially the plants that have uh, sacred medicine power to them that can help us open our consciousness. So uh, I haven't played in a long time, so you'll have to forgive me. I have to look at the words and the, the chords here. Thank you, plant people, you show us how to live. Thank you, plant people, you show us how to give. Growing to fullness, Blossom on the vine, Ikuri and Yahe, plants divine. Ikuri is a uh, witch old name for the peyote medicine. And my friend Sean and I were walking from our cars over here tonight and saw a big mural a couple of blocks from here. I said, whoa, there's, there's, there's peyote up in that wall there. So that was, that was I guess we're in the right place. <laughs> Taken with respect and care, taken with gratitude, they help us see and grow the great Tao ocean flow. Like the plant people, we breathe and we grow all that we can be, all that we can know. So thank you, plant people, you show us how to give. Thank you, plant people, you show us how to live. Growing to fullness, blossom on the vine, the kuri and yahe, plants divine. Spider web connecting, invisible but strong. In its mighty strands, we all do belong. You feed us, you heal us, you make us happy, and some of you even help us to see. 
plant us a gratis. Hey on a ho, plant us a gratis. Hey on a ho, plant us a gratis. Hey on a ho, regalus a gratis. Hey, hey, yo, regalus de la madre. Hey on a ho, regalus de la madre. Hey on a ho, regalus de la madre. Hey on a ho, regalus, segalus, hey, ay, yo. Gracias por la vida. Hey on a ho, gracias por la vida. Hey on a ho, gracias por la vida. Hey on a ho, plantas, segalus, hey, ay, yo. Planta Sagrada, sacred plants. Hey. Oh, good. Yeah, I don't have to stand here anymore. So it feels right to me to be in uh, in in right relationship with the um, spirits of the of the plant people, to uh, because that's primarily what I've been working with for now almost half a century to take a few moments and, and uh, some of us, probably the majority of us, maybe all of us have had experience with some of these plant people. The peyote and the, uh, and the uh, ayahuasca and, uh, and the uh, tionana cottle. And um, so we've all been touched one way or another. And even if you haven't taken those, su those sacred substances into your body, you're interested in them and they're talking to you, they're calling you, you wouldn't be here tonight. So right relationship is just to take a moment and I invite you just to drop in for a moment, drop down into your heart, bring awareness to breath and just take the ladder, the escalator down into your heart and to uh, listen in to, to, your, to whatever gratitude you might have for the experiences that the these ancient elders wisdom elders might have helped you to get in touch with so just take a moment of silence to drop into how these elders might have spoken to you in your life helped you to open deepen open That phone is ringing. We're getting them on the line. They're getting us on the line here. So with that line open and established through our hearts, I just want to send a, a, a voice of thankfulness to you, Spiritu de las Plantas, the sacred plants. Thank you for your lives. Thank you for your willingness to share of yourselves, to literally give of your bodies, that we can take them into our bodies, hopefully in a respectful way, and open ourselves to the wisdom that you would both bring into us and help us to open within ourselves in a sacred dialogue and prayers for all of your families, uh, protection. In many places where you grow, there's many threats uh, to your lives, to your families. So uh, healing and protection prayer, prayers to your people. And, and thank you so much for, for your willingness to, uh, to allow us to, to, and the elders who pass on the ways of right relationship with you, to give us the opportunity to, to take you into our bodies and open the, the Neorica, the doorway, the sacred doorway to a sacred dialogue to help us wake up and remember. Pomprios, thank you. All right. All right. Oh. Hey, it's great to be here. People like yourselves here. Far out. Pomprios. Pomprios is a witch old word. It means thank you. So I want to uh, share a little bit um, in relationship to the, the focus, uh, the subject focus, and maybe a little background, all of which hopefully serves as a, a, a diving board for us as a collective to be able to jump up on the end of the diving board and take off to open a doorway so we can have a dialogue, you know, questions and, and, uh, and just sharing amongst ourselves because that's what to me is most interesting. So let's see, my memory serves me by the way, man, this is a hard place to find. If this young brother walking here hadn't helped us get here, we would have been walking down Mission Street and we never would have made it. So uh, <laughs> congratulations for those of you who made it here for the first time. Mm, psychedelics enriching our lives. The potential of psychedelics to enrich our lives. Seems to me 
from my own uh, experience and the work of ha uh, half a century that I've been doing here and around the world, work with all kinds of folks, is um, the psychedelics and right relationship and or through grace have the potential to show us, have the ability to show us our highest potentials open a doorway of awareness of consciousness to show us what our true highest potentials are. What our true highest potentials are, who and what we really are underneath the, uh, the physical body, the other side of the epidermis and the ego that identifies who we are as this body and the stories that go along with the ego and all the dramas that go along with that. So the medicine has the potential to open a doorway and say, honey, you're, you're way much more than that. You are way much more than that. In fact, you're hooked up by birth through grace with the infinite creative wisdom power of the universe. And at the essence of your being is like, is a, is a, if we had a candle here, uh, that, what that candle would be showing us, it's like a mirror saying, what you see in me, this, this shining light, it's in you. It, it's at the center of your being, that place of connection at the deepest place of your, your soul and who and what you really are with the infinite creative wisdom power of the universe. That's who you are. And within that, you're a sacred and worthy and luminous being. And the essence of that energy, in English, we call love. And we have many different meanings for that and, and associations for it, but it's an, uncon it's an energy, it's an uncon and many of you have seen and felt that in your, in your journeys and experiences, I'm sure. So the man, I had no clue about that. When I was 20 years old, I was an undergraduate at San Francisco State, I was a stone-cold atheist, political activist, uh, cyn cynical, uh, bitter uh, about, you know, the bullshit that was going on then in society, which of course now we know is, you know, 100% more. Uh, and and I, I was very interested in LSD because the accounts I was hearing, and it was still legal then, was that it opened up the doorways of the unconscious, and that's what I'm interested in. I really want to uh, uh, open the doorways to explore my own unconscious. And when I read the literature and talk to people, we talk about having spiritual experiences. I cynically would just write that off. Well, that's, that's an hallucination. That's just... That's just, you know, the chemistry or something. That's, that's not real. I just want to know about the unconscious, what it, what, how it unveils the, the contents of the unconscious. So that's the way I went into it. I went into it with teachers that um, brought me into it in a respectful way. So it wasn't a recreational um, entry. It was a serious, focused in, intention with people who knew what they were doing and I trusted. Because I it spent about a year preparing myself with the understanding that it would open the doorways to my unconscious and oh my god what my fears and anxieties of what what might lurk in there that the LSD might suddenly and can I face that can I handle it so it took me about a year to work through that to get to the place of okay I think I'm I'm ready to to um, let the, the contents of whatever might be lurking in there come out and face it so I went ahead and uh, took the LSD and um, the experience just totally blew out the fuse box, just totally blew out the fuse box. And I had uh, three experiences that uh, have, uh, have been the, the guiding source of my life ever since that and the, and the attempt to understand deeper and integrate the fruits of those three experiences. Those three fields are like Sheldrake talks about the morphogenetic fields, these three fields of morphogenetic uh, wisdom that opened up. So I think I'll share briefly about those three fields because it uh, addresses the, the potential of the psychedelics and right relationship to help us see our highest potentials and interwoven with that to see what gets in the way. I'm sorry if some of you are behind that column. I'm well, not too bad. It helps us to see also... Um, what's going on inside there that gets in the way of us realizing and living from our highest potentials. All, all our shadow stuff, all our, um, well, what some call the inner adversary that knocks us off course from where we, where we want to go and how we want to try to live our lives uh, from our deepest values, but all of a sudden our buttons get pushed by something and triggered reactivity, either internally directed or externally Directed so the psychedelics have they, they like like Groff talks about it's a it's a, a um, 
a nonspecific amplifier of when the doors open to what's in the unconscious and how it might come out and what's in the higher consciousness that come through. One or both. That's, that's what they do. So I heard recently a good, a good uh, definition uh, or description of our, our job, a job description for us as human beings. Our job description as human beings is to realize the holiness of our wholeness to realize the holiness of the full circle of our being, the dark, the black, the white, the shadow, the feminine, the masculine, the, the killer, the saint, the this, that the homish book of what the human potential is. And then, uh, especially in the second half of life, like Jung speaks about, to, to bring the, the light of awareness into the shadow, to go into those dark places and bring consciousness to those places and create relationship with the shadow aspects of ourselves so that they're no longer running us. They're no longer running us, but we're able to create skillful relationship with those aspects of our being and realize the holiness of our wholeness. So the medicine in right relationship will take us both places and shine a sh flashlight and say, here's the shit you got to deal with. It's clogging your pipes up. And here's your potential. Here's what you really are. Now it's up to you. Because we all know that it's, it's, it's pretty easy to drink something, to drink a cup of ayahuasca or, or choose some peyote, although it takes some effort because those of you who've tasted it, it's not the greatest taste, or is the ayahuasca. You don't drink or eat that for pleasure. And the mushrooms are relatively benign. And, but it, in all three cases, it doesn't take much to open your mouth and swallow. Doesn't take much. And like Houston Smith says, the, re the real work is that um, you have an altered state, but the purpose of that altered state and the potential of that altered state is to do the work of integration so you can create it into an altered trait. And in the, in, you might say in a shamanic context, like on Vision Quest, I've, I've also been doing Vision Quests up in the Sierra for over 40 years. Once a year, take a group up to the mountains. Uh, and through the fasting uh, and being up there, it opens consciousness. And, and um, to similar, similar realms, they're not quite the same visuals usually. But the same inter, uh, interdependent uh, dynamics with, with a Vision Quest, a, a medicine journey, is if you're, uh, if you're sincere in your heart and you show up and you're open and receptive and through grace and you're in a good setting and you have intention, then um, the medicine, as, as you know from your own experience, will give you something significant. Not necessarily what you want or de de desire, but it'll give you something that's meaningful. And in, in a shamanic understanding of that, the spirit of the plant, as soon as you indicate an interest in, in, in taking that plant, it's as if you've gone to the, uh, your spirit has gone to the door of where that spirit lives, where the peyote lives, or the, where the uh, yahe lives, or where the mushrooms live. And your spirit's knocked on the door, <clears throat> and, and then that spirit of the medicine is you know, come up and you know, open the door and sit. Well, what do you want? What's up? What do you want? Why did you call me? Wants to know your intention. And wants to know also, um, what are you seeking? Why, why, why are you knocking on my door? It also wants to know, um, what, it, what are you willing to give of yourself? I hear you want something. I do, in fact, have the potential to give you or help you experience what you want. But what are you willing to give of yourself? These are dynamics of what I would call right relationship, respectful right relationship that uh, the, f the elders I've been with over the years around the world have been fortunate enough to, to learn about. What is it that you're willing to give of yourself? And then, and then lastly, if the spirit of the plant says, if I, if I give you what you want, what are you willing to do with it? What's, what are you going to do with it? Are you just going to let it drift away or... or you know, talk about it, you know, at the next uh, party or whatever, like, woo, that was far out, woo. Or uh, the plant spirit wants to know, are you, are you willing to recognize that if I give you this uh, medicine teaching or, or healing or whatever it might be, I'm giving that to you to take home into your life, not leave here in the Amazon or the place where you're taking it. I'm giving you this medicine, with a, this gift with a responsibility. It's being given to you to take home and integrate it in your life. Create a practice that's meaningful to you so for the rest of your life on, you can do the best you can to live from what I've shown you and to nurture it and help it grow. 
and realize the highest potential of who you are as a sacred, worthy, luminous being here with purpose and with gifts that need to be nurtured to grow, to f reach their fullest potential and to be shared with your people, not to be kept, you know, under wraps inside of yourself, but to be shared with your people. So the uh, three fields of uh, information that were uh, open to me that blew out the fuse box. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Well, the beginning of it was um, the, I was with one, two, three other people who were all experienced uh, psychedelic people. And we were in Haight-Ashbury, this was like, I think, 66. And uh, we're lying on the floor, we'd, we'd set up sacred intention, lying on the floor. Well, I didn't buy the sacred stuff, but just serious. And after a while, they're starting to say things like, whoa, this is, it's coming on, I can feel it coming on. And somebody said, well, this is pretty strong. I'm not feeling anything. So I think to myself, a couple of things. I think one is, um, well, maybe my, my brain chemistry is different and this, this doesn't affect me. Maybe it won't affect me. That's one thought I have. Then another thought is, a um, little paranoid, said, maybe this is a put on. Maybe this whole thing is a put on. They're just putting me on here. So that's going through there. And then I notice the curtains are billowing. <laughs> so while I'm, I get up and I walk over to close the windows, windows already closed. <laughs> uh, okay, something's happening here. And I remember the instructions, uh, four gentlemen who played a little music, turn off your mind and relax and float downstream. So lie down, opened up and surrendered. And uh, The first experience I have is I'm, 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 I'm in the crowd, and I'm not Christian, by the way, and I'm an agnostic, you know, at that point I was, I was an atheist. Religion is the opiate of the masses. It's like bullshit, people who can't handle reality. So all of a sudden I'm in the audience where Christ is, where this dude, Christ is getting crucified. I'm in the audience watching him, you know, and all of a sudden my consciousness is in his body while he's getting crucified. I'm not Christ, but I'm in there. And, um, and I'm thinking to myself, these guys are driving spikes in a minute. All I need is an Uzi and I'm going to take these fuckers out. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's where I'm at. And, um, and then I hear from this, the consciousness of this being that I'm in saying, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Now those are just words, but what I experience is the consciousness of this dude who's able to say that and mean it under those conditions. So that was my opening to the, the phenomena, if you will, of, of unconditional love that, that exists in the universe. I had no clue, had absolutely no clue of that kind of energy. That was the first thing that blew out the fuse box. The second was, um, as a kid, I'd, I'd, I'd frequently try to comprehend infinity. I'd lie out in the woods and look up at the stars at night and just try to, you know, grok infinity and, you know, that would, on a minor level, blow out the fuse box, give up. So um, the second field, that, uh, a morphogenetic field uh, that opened up was I, I could see infinity. I, I grokked infinity. I got it. I was in it. And I saw within that the whole cultural, the whole historical line of my genetic uh, ancestors going all the way back to the beginning. I could see the whole thing leading up to me, what they'd experienced, how it had shaped their worldviews, their values, it was passed on all the way up to me and how I had been conditioned by all of that. I could see all of that conditioning. And I saw it and experienced it. That, that, that's a surface thing. It's like, a, it's like the membrane of the balloon. And underneath that is infinite, creative energy and that's the essence of my being and that's what it means that that we're created in our creator's image so i saw all of that it's a new ball game inside me as a human being and nothing special about me it's the same for everyone we have that access to infinite creative energy infinite creative energy no matter what the thoughts of our mind that say, well, you're not an artist, you can't sing, you can't write, you know, whatever it is. It's like, mm, infinite creative 
energy. Grokking infinity. That was the second field. 